Amen. Those of you who have your Bibles, if you would, we're going to go into this word. Amen. I'm just ready to just download this. Uh, the enemy has been on attack uh, ever since God had gave me release on this. I had went bowling and it never happened to me before, but the owl ate up my ball. Never seen it done before. Amen. It was a, and so I had went home and started praying. And then the next thing you know, I said, the next day, I said, my truck almost ran me over. I said, oh, the enemy, he don't want this to get out. I said, but I thank God for him. Because how many of you know when God gives you a word, you're the first partaker? Right. Amen. I'm the first partaker of everything. So God knew what he was doing. Those of you who have your Bibles, go with me, first of all, to Deuteronomy, um, the eighth chapter. You can stand for reverence of the word of God. Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. I'll be reading the first and the second verse, and then we'll be going to 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, Deuteronomy 8, 1 and 2. And it reads as follows. It says, all the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the days, all the ways which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou would keep his commandments or no. Amen. Go with me to 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, the 18th verse. And it reads as follows, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read, amen, Deuteronomy uh, so you can get ver better clarification. I'm going to read it in the Message Bible so you can understand where we're going. It says, keep and live out the entire commandment that I'm commanding you today so that you will live and prosper and enter and own the land that God promised to your ancestors. Here we go. Remember every road that God lead, led you on for those 40 years in the wilderness, pushing you to your limits, testing you so that he would know what you were made of, whether you would keep his commandments or not. Amen. OK. And 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 also in the message in the uh, first Thessalonians the fifth chapter couldn't have both of them at the same time you got to switch it over listen to what it says it says be cheerful no matter what pray all the time Thank God, no matter what happens, this is the way God wants you, who belongs to Christ Jesus, to live. Amen. Look to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Say, the subject is, the subject is God, wants God wants a thanks, a thanks. In, your in your spirit. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Say, God wants, God wants a thanks. A in your, spirit. in your spirit. Amen. God wants, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. God wants a thanks in your spirit. And one thing that I know about God is that when God places something in your spirit, it first becomes information in your mind. And a lot of times when we read the word of God, that's what it is, is information. And what it is is that sometimes God will allow you to be tried in order for the information to be tested, in order for it to be real to you. Amen. 
how many of you know that your deep-seated belief system is based on basically the experience that you have with God? It doesn't come real to you unless you end up experiencing it, and God end up allowing it to not only come to be word, but he changes it to be rhema. Amen? That means that, that it becomes alive inside of you. I said, God, when you give me this, I don't know why God deal with me with acronyms, but God give me acronyms for people to get an understanding of the word. So therefore, the word will have a different meaning unto you. He said, in the T, you got to understand and let my people know that sometimes I would allow you to be tried. Come on here. Because when you are tried, that's when I press the best out of you. Amen. You don't really get into a deep relationship with God unless there's something going on around you that make you want and need God. Amen. Other than that, sometimes we get into our own selfish modes and everything, thinking that God is a Santa Claus, that we only call him, expect him to give us something when we want it. Come on here now. But God sometimes allow us to get into a position that we, he wants us to understand who he is and want him from the trueness of your heart. Amen. Many people say thanks a lot of times. Amen. Sometimes you get presents and everything and knowing that you really don't like. Come on, you know how it is. You get a tie with lights on it and you still say thanks. You know what I mean? It's not something that you really want, but you get into a routine because it's the right thing to do. Amen. But here God wants to put a thanks inside of us that where though it means something to the point that you are grateful to the point that nobody has to do anything for you. But you understand the thanks come from within that somebody thought enough of you to want to do something for you. Amen. God wants to put a thanks. The first thing he would do, he would try you. And then in the H, he will humble you. Come on here now. Because in trying you, you realize that you can't deliver yourself. Amen. So therefore, you will be thankful unto God when he brings you out. Amen. Come on here. God will have a way of changing things and turning things around so that he can get the glory out of your life. Come on here. God will put you in a press. Come on here now. Everybody wants to be anointed, but nobody wants to get in the press. Come on here. The press comes when it squeezes the oil out of you. Come on here now. Everybody wants to be blessed, but nobody got to understand that it costs to be blessed. Come on here now. You got to go through and understand that God wants to press a thanks in your spirit because when you get that thanks in your spirit, it becomes what you call in your subconscious that it runs automatically. Come on here now. You don't have to think about when you drive. It becomes so much of a natural thing that when you get in, you just do it. Come on here now. God wants to put that kind of thanks in your spirit that whatever going on, regardless to what, you will say thanks. Come on here now. Regardless of what it is. Come on here. We're knowing that this Thanksgiving day, whether you're having beans, come on here, or whether you're having turkey, come on here. Now. You'll still be able to say thanks because at least you're eating. Come on here now. God wants to bring us to the point of understanding just as he did the children of Israel. He had end up allowing them. How do you know that sometimes God will lead you in a wilderness? Oh, come on here now. He will lead you in a wilderness experience so that you can be proven not to God because he already knows. He will be proven unto yourself because God got a way of letting you know you're not really where you think you are. Come on here now. Come on, come on. We can be spiritual and we can be real wonderful when everything is going good. Come on here. But when the rubber hits the road, baby, come on here. The real you begin to start showing up. Come on here. That's when the, the tightness of the grip, come on here now, of the squeezing of the anointing to come out. Come on here now. You can't get out of all without you being pressed. Come on here. Without you being squeezed. Come on here. Without the juice beginning. Come on here now. Because that's what people need. People don't need you. They need the juice. That Oh, come on here. Y'all going to get it. And see, sometimes God would allow your life to go through a pressing. Because he's trying to get a thanks in your spirit. Because then when he gets the thanks in your spirit, because the Bible says, this is the will of God concerning you. 
In other words, God wants you to be in a position that will be pleasing unto him that when he places a thanks in your spirit, you're not looking at the circumstances. Come on here. You're looking at God and understanding that this is another opportunity that God set me up to bring him glory. Come on here now. God has a way that he, as he began to start allowing the children of Israel to go through different tests and trials so that they can understand that you do not live by bread alone. Come on here now. He fed a man, come on here now, in the wilderness to let them know that you do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Come on here now. I know everybody going to eat their turkey. Come on here. Come on, you going to eat your collard greens in your, and come on here now. You, and maybe get some cabbage. Come on here, some sweet potatoes and everything. But here, the Bible's letting me know that your thanks don't come because of a turkey leg. Come on here. Your thanks come because God being gracious enough to put something on your table, come on here, allowing you to work, allowing you to provide, amen, in a level that is pleasing unto him. Then God gets to the point where he let us know that in everything, not for everything, God wants to have a thanks in our spirit. So he tries us and he humbles us. Then God gets to the point where he anoints us. Be, come on here now. Come on. In the A, he anoints us, not for us. Come on here now. He anoints us for the service that he wants us to do on his behalf. Come on here now. Everybody sing is not anointed. Come on here now. Everybody that preaches is not anointed because people don't want to go through. Come on here. It takes time to build an anointing in God. Come on here. It's amazing how you can be a preacher today and a bishop tomorrow. It takes time. You got to go through some things. You got to be able to establish a relationship with God. You got to allow God to work his work in you. Faithful is he who have called of you who will also do it. Come on here. You got to allow God to do something. Look at him and say, neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh, neighbor. Say, God wants, God wants a thanks in your spirit. Because now you're going to look at things at a different manner now. Because now you got to understand the things that God places on you is not something that God has to do. Come on here now. We wake up in the morning and we don't understand. That ain't something God has to do. Come on here now. You inhale and you exhale his air. That ain't something God has to do. Come on here now. You got a roof over your head. That ain't something God has to provide for you. Amen. You got to realize that God is working things out on your behalf, and he wants to get in your spirit that, God, we know that it's all things, God, work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are the called according to your purpose, God. But not only that, God, you, God, yeah. who work it, who, who is the work of all the counsel of your own will, God. You work of all things under the counsel of your own will. Yeah. So, God, you are strategizing. Yes. God, everybody's life. Come on here now. Everybody can't go through the same thing that you go through because they are not anointed to deal with what you need to deal with. Come on here. Everybody can't be able to be able to stand after the midst of diversity. Come on here now. Because they haven't gone through what you've gone through. Come on here. God is trying to build a thanks in your spirit, but he got to try you. He has to humble you. Then he got to anoint you for the test. Come on here now. Because after he anoints you, he got to put a knot in your spirit. Oh, come on. Y'all ain't going to get that. Say, neighbor, he got to put a knot in your spirit. Oh, come on here. Oh, you got to understand what not mean. Come on here now. Because when God built, come on here. When he anoints you, he put a boldness in your spirit. Where although you will get in your mind and say, not here. Oh, come on here. Come on here. Come on here. Come on. When the devil try to come up against you and try to place something in your spirit, you'll say, not here. Amen. Come on here. It's something that you got to understand and draw the line with that you ain't even going to allow to happen. You'll say, not here. Come on here. And sometimes young people like to make a short. And every time they're trying to come up and somebody trying to put something upon you, you can say, not. Come on here. Oh, y'all, y'all going to get it. Come on here. You ain't got to do a long dissertation. Come on here. All you got to say is not. Come on here. And understand, because the enemy wants to get the best or try to take the best out of you, he'll drain you with a whole lot of stuff. And it's amazing how he makes your life 
busy. Come on here now. He'll make your life so busy to the point that you will get to the point where you will start allowing things to seep in, knowing that it's not of God, and it will bring you to the point where you got to say, not, come on here now, because what it is, the enemy wants to sneak, come on, he ain't doing no, 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 no points that where as though you can see him, he's being tricky, he's being conniving, that's his job, come on here, allowing subtle things to happen, and you got to be able to allow the things of God to be in your spirit, knowing that he is the one that's God in your footsteps. Come on, he already let those, those traps and snares that are set before you. God already got you covered. You don't understand the reason why you made it here? Because God allowed his angels to hold back. Come on here. Come on, if he would have showed you what could have happened on your way here. Come on here now. Because angels being dispatched around you and you think that you got here with no problems. Come on here. You got here with no troubles. But the point of it, God would pull back the curtain and let you see all what he protected you from. Come on here now. All of what he has covered you from and everything. God is putting a thanks in your spirit so that we won't be able to take the things that God is doing for granted. God comes to Kingdom Church every Sunday. Amen. He don't have to because he doesn't visit everywhere. It's because God chooses, amen, to do a thing for us. Amen. God puts us in a position to not only trust, try us and test us, to humble us and anoint us, then he brings us to the point where you got to have a knot in your spirit because it's, the point is when you are anointed, that means that now I'm moving from the back of the line, come on here, to the front of the line. And then you got to realize when you're on the front of the line of the enemy, then you are yet, you are now in line for more ammunition and more dots to be thrown at you. Come on here now. Everybody get to the point, and many times the praise singing, God, I withhold nothing from you, all right? Now we get deep and we get spiritual. Come on here now. We get real deep and spiritual, but you got to understand that's a cost. Come on here, because that moves you from the back of the line to now to the front of the line. And you got to realize that the Bible said that many righteous but God has delivered us out of them all so therefore if you are righteous expect the enemy to come amen but understanding that in the next one in the K God give us keys come on here now God give us keys to the kingdom come on here now come on he tests us he, he humbles us he anoints us and he gives a knot in our spirit because he gives us now ability to take the keys of the kingdom of God the Bible says that Peter come on here now been able to be able to recognize who Christ was through and by God. Come on here now. So therefore, God revealed us. Come on here. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Come on here now. God revealed that to Peter. But then it's another thing when God, when you end up understanding who God is, then God will let you know who you are. Come on here. Thou art no longer Peter. Thou art Simon by Jonah. Come on here. Meaning that you are a fragment of a rock. Come on here. Meaning that you are a part of me. Come on here. And now you got to realize that you got Jesus in the sight of you. Come on here. Come on here. The massive name of God inside of you. You have the authority, the keys of the kingdom of heaven and earth. Come on here. Now, he know him now when you get in the point. Come on, slow down, Holy Spirit. Slow down. This thing flowing, y'all. I'm trying, trying to get it all in, but come on, Holy Spirit. Slow it down, please. I'm trying to breathe. <laughs> when he's flowing, boy, I tell you, he's going. Amen. Amen. God is allowing us to understand that now that he has tested us and he's humbled us and he's anointed us and he put a knot in your spirit, now that he now he puts you in a position to receive the keys of the kingdom. Because when you receive the keys of the kingdom, notice it's not to the point till Peter didn't receive them until after he ended up realizing who God was and who God said he was. And a lot of times what it is, is that we don't really know who we are because we don't even really know who God is. Oh, come on here now. When we realize who God is, then you'll really know who you are in God. Come on here now. Y'all going to get this in a minute. Because it's important that you need to know. Because no way that you're going to be able to take a Chrysler, come on here, to a Ford dealer, and really find out the true essence of what the Chrysler is. 
Oh, y'all going to get that in a minute. No, you need to go back to the manufacturer because the manufacturer put all his ideas in it. Come on here. He put his purpose. He put all his plans in it. He knows how it works. Come on here. He knows the hidden specs of it. Come on here. So therefore, when you go to God, come on here now, he tell you all of who you are, what you can do. Come on here. What you can't do. Come on here. God wants to bring you to the point of understanding who you really are. Because a lot of times we sell ourselves short. Come on here. God wants you to understand when you put a thanks in your spirit, whatever comes, God, I know you got it under control. Come on here. It's not even about me. Come on here, God. It's about what you're trying to get done through me, God. Come on here. Because somebody else might be watching you go through. Watch you go through. Because later on, they might need your testimony. Come on here. Because therefore, it's not about you. It's about what God wants to do through you. So when God reveals to you who you are, you can handle the kings properly. And then in that same scripture, he tells you how to handle it. He said, whatsoever you bound on earth, come on here, it'll be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth, it'll be loosed in heaven. Come on, he showed us how to handle the keys. Come on here now. When he brings you to that point of understanding the authority that he's placing inside of you, that all of it is really about the last part, the Son of God. Come on here now. When you realize that you have been tried, when you realize you have been, hun hum been humbled, and then you've been anointed, come on here, you get that knot in your spirit. I don't know why the Holy Spirit want me to hold up on that knot again. Because the point is, is that when a knot comes in your spirit, it places a boundary. Come on here now. Stuff that you ain't going to take no more. Come on. Things you ain't going to put up with no more. Things you ain't going to let ride. Come on here. And you ain't going to ride with it. Come on here. Yeah, come on. A knot comes in your spirit to put a standard of God inside of you to let you know that I stand. Come on here. In the book of Psalms. Come on here. The 26th book of Psalms. 26, 26 Psalms in the first book. Come on here, let me get that right. Come on, let me get that right. Amen. In the last verse, notice, notice what David ended up saying. David said that my feet are yet standing even in the congregation that I might bless the Lord. And the reason why he said that, he said my, 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 my feet are even because I'm not off balance. Oh, come on here now. I'm not off balance because it's amazing how we can tell our problems in the opening, but we can't bless God. Come on here. Come on here now. Come on here now. We'll tell everybody openly, but we come on here now. All our problems. But when it comes to blessing God, come on here now. We can't even lift our holy hands. Come on here now. Because we, God wants us to be balanced. Come on here now. You can tell God all your problems in private. Come on here now. But when you come in the open of the congregation, you ought to be able to openly be able to bless God. Because when God places a thanks in your spirit, that means that you had an experience that God has already delivered your wants. Come on here now. Come on here now. Come on here. Yeah. See, see, we need to be like David and start rehearsing some things. Wait a minute, God. If you deliver me from the lion, come on here. You deliver me from the paws of the bear. Come on here now. Because now my faith is being built up on a past experience. Come on here now. So now, now, now he said, well, this circumcised, this uncircumcised Philistine is no problem. Because if you did it before, you can do it again. Come on here now. Because you got to realize that God is still the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. So therefore, whatever comes, come on here, no matter what it is, come on here, you can say, thanks, God, because you tried me. You humbled me. You anointed me. And because of that, God, I got a knot in my spirit. So whatever it is, not here. Because I got the kings to the kingdom. Come on here now. Because I got the kings of the kingdom, I can properly operate. Because I got the son of God living on the inside of me. Amen. Look to him and they say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Say, God wants to put a thanks in your spirit. Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise. Let's give the Lord a praise. Amen. Amen.